So I think we've all heard a lot of the same or at least similar advice on how to communicate uh, throughout our academic careers, particularly in the context of giving, uh, delivering presentations. These are things like uh, know who your audience is, uh, avoid jargon, use visuals, use humor when you can, uh, summarize at the end, use that sandwich method, tell them what you're gonna tell them, tell them and tell them what you told them. Uh, I think a lot of us have heard this. Uh, I think it's very important to use this throughout our lives when we're communicating. So tell me about your work. This is a question that we're gonna get throughout our lives in very different contexts. How do you respond to this? Where do you start? How much detail do you give? What does your audience already know, and what do they even want to know? That last question is something you really need to ask yourself as you start to craft a response. What does your audience actually want to hear? What do they care about? What matters to them? Has anyone seen this meme? It's TLDR. It stands for too long, didn't read. And this is a trap that a lot of technical people fall into. It would also apply to too long, didn't listen. You should be responding to questions with one to two sentences. No jargon, no acronyms. Let the person you're speaking with respond with their own questions. Um, now, where do you start? Start from the big picture perspective. Um, you need to tell people how your work fits into the world, how your work affects the broader community. What does it mean to you and me? You are figuring out how to make better fuels to put in our cars. Maybe it's to uh, decrease emissions, maybe it's to help people in developing countries get out of poverty. Um, that is how it fits into the world. People with a non-technical background will hear that and they'll say, oh, I understand what you're saying. Tell me more. A friend of mine uh, who does not have a technical background but also works uh, on Capitol Hill for a senator uh, was visiting the NASA Ames Space Center uh, a couple of years ago. And she met a scientist who was working on developing an organic water filtration system. He started out by saying on a deep space mission where we're sending equipment out for uh, years, maybe even decades, we want our equipment to last a long time. Um, the way that he was trying to figure that out is to use organic or plant-based materials uh, that would be able to repair themselves so they could sustain over these decade-long missions. Um, he also told her that this type of technology is useful in disaster-stricken areas. And when there are shortages of water, like after the earthquake in Haiti, these, this technology was useful for helping people. She remembered this because he appealed to her emotions. He used non-technical language. She remembers what's important, which is that this is interesting stuff. Uh, this research applies outside of space exploration. Uh, and it's worthwhile. And as my friend works for a senator who sits on the Senate Appropriations Committee, which decides where money goes, that's a pretty good thing to communicate as a scientist. As a congressional staffer, I meet with lobbyists uh, every day, probably five to 10 lobbyists a week. Um, and they all kind of fit into one of two categories. They're either a Bobby or a Libby. Now Bobby comes into my office, we sit down, and he starts talking at me. Uh, he'll tell me who he is, who he represents, the problems he's having, uh, he'll use acronyms and, and jargon that I might not be familiar with. But basically, 25 minutes in, every time, I'll look at my watch and I'll say, Bobby, we only have the room for about five more minutes. So if there's anything else important that you want to get across, do it now. And Bobby will get flustered, he'll look through his uh, notes, and he'll uh, talk a little faster uh, to me for the next five minutes. I'll usher him out. Um, I'll be left with a lot of information and not a lot of uh, context on what I can do about it. Libby comes in, she'll uh, talk to me about uh, her trip in, or we'll talk about the weather, we'll talk about where we're from, get a little bit of a personal connection there so that we understand each other. And then we will uh, talk about her issue, and she'll give me a couple sentences, uh, give me the opportunity to respond, and uh, we'll have a back and forth. Uh, she'll leave me with a one piece of paper that has an infographic or some bullet points on exactly what it is that she would like us to do for her, um, us being me and, and my boss, the senator. So she leaves me with the sense uh, that uh, we're engaged, we understand each other, um, I want to help her. It's very easy to help her because she's done the job for me if it aligns with my boss's interests, of course. Um, and uh, I, I leave uh, a little bit 
uh, happier than I leave with a meeting with Bobby. There's only really two things that I want to tell you, so start paying attention. Number one, start from the big picture. How do you fit into the puzzle of the world and the space that your audience, your targeted listeners interact in? And two, what does your listener care about? And craft your conversation around that. Thank you.